Gebracht. Ja, dat kan ik niet achter. I'm going to be the microphone stand, so ignore me. That's okay, I'm, I'm fine with it. Oh, you have to put power in it. Yeah. And you want to have a... Okay, ready to go. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Jan Walter. I work for the mill in London. And actually, I worked for them already uh, 10 years ago. But 12 years ago, I worked for Ton on the Blender source code. But that was before it went open source. So let's start. I tried to do this in 25 minutes. Um, I will talk about global uh, illumination renderers and comparing them using mainly Blender. And uh, today, I have only 25 minutes to talk about it, so I will focus on three of them, which is uh, Radiance, Arnold, and Cycles. But uh, I made those tests with many more, so you can see it on the slides, and the slides can be downloaded uh, from my web page. And uh, here's actually something I have a local copy on. This is my render comparison. And uh, there. I will show three uh, three very simple scenes, but there are more on it, and there are more to come. So it's like a work in progress, uh, actually, already for a couple of years. Uh, and uh, I want to open a forum, which you are all invited to. And I have some professional friends from the film industry, which will contribute as well. But this is basically on the slides here. That's the link uh, on my web page where you can see all the images I will show. And uh, below, there are two Bitbucket uh, repositories. And everything I show, including the software I wrote, whatever, is like uh, on repositories. And at some point, I want to make it available to everybody. The reason why it's not available right now is because uh, Arnold is still proprietary and the company I work for has signed an NDA and as long as there's no official version, I'm not allowed to show the scene structure or API of Arnold. But I'm going to start with, and I will come back to this slide. So a lot of you will ask yourself, why Radiance? Never heard of Radiance or, okay, the official version is architects and engineers uh, use it more for predict illumination researchers to test new technology. Um, but uh, you own a lot to Radiance. Uh, there wouldn't be uh, HDR lighting or anything like that without Radiance. So that's the reason why I called it Radiance Worth, you name it. And let me go back to that slide, because like every renderer can output like color images. But Radiance is actually good in analyzing real lighting conditions. And what you see here is like a so-called contour plot. So basically, if I follow that red line, it says everywhere in that you know, scene where it's like red, uh, there will be 3,750 lux, which is a measurement for light arriving in the scene. And then you see uh, in, this overex, uh, in this overlay, it's going from red to orange, uh, yellow, green, blue, so more, less and less light will arrive, for example, at the back of this desk. And uh, in architecture here, you see like light coming from the sun, it goes directly onto the ground, but here's something which makes it bounce 
against the ceiling and that's what global illumination is about you know how can you influence the situation of lighting in for example a architectural situation in a room by just putting extra elements which uh, make the light bounce and radiance is still very accurate I will start with this very simple scene what's the simplest scene you can do it's like two spheres one emits light the other one shows it so basically what you want to render in this scene is just a room containing a simple box and uh, a sphere and the sphere is rendered on the left side so everything in that scene is visible in one simple sphere so I put the camera outside so I'm looking through a window into the room this is a room and there's another room so what's what's the sense of the scene there's one sphere emitting light casting shadow here and uh, there's a Sun which casts shadow here on that uh, from that building but you don't really see it in that sphere what you do see is uh, the Sun also goes through that window opening and it makes this very bright spot of light uh, which is visible in a reflection here in the sphere and it also bounces off this building and illuminates the uh, ground like twice directly and indirectly and that's uh, what you call caustics in the renderer so outside there's also something called sun and sky simulation which also creates that uh, horizon stripe so this is not part of geometry the lower part of the uh, ground is actually geometry but that part here and here and we will come back to that uh, is actually done by a sun and sky and ground simulation so some of uh, your renderers including cycles I think do the sun and the sky but some of them also do the ground like radiance or manta ray okay to recap this is like the light emitting sphere reflection this is the window and this is a spot of light on the ground and this is all a reflection here it's a uh, distorted version of the same window and of the same emitting light sphere and uh, you can see uh, the ground is upside down this is like basically on the back of the sphere let's look at this quickly in radiance so I render this twice once in the subdirectory and I just say make all and while I'm talking it's rendering five images in 2000 by 2000 resolution and it's scaling down because radiance doesn't have like something like a depth adaptive uh, sampling you see it's very quick but what I want to talk about is this very bright thing and the outside is not really visible so uh, you have to think about in with global illumination about exposure so if you take a real camera and you don't take care of you know uh, putting uh, the right settings you know you can be easily overexposed or underexpose your image so what do, what do I do with radiance I press A or H A for automatic exposure compensation H for human exposure compensation is not much difference but as you can see the ground color comes through now I can see outside I can see the horizon which is slightly different in color I can see the real ground I can see the caustics I can see the outside building I will get rid of this and I want to compare those images to a slightly different setup let's get rid of this and this is what I actually oh, wanted to okay now I can not compare against the one but uh, that's the one I wanted to uh, actually render and now let's go one directory lower and I type the same thing make all it will take a little bit longer to render but what's happening is like in this REF file it's like make files I help the renderer which has a, a lot of different parameters I help it by saying okay I have an exterior scene or I have an interior scene I help you with the exposure to do a better job and what you will see is that this horizon stripe now will uh, even so it comes from a shader will have a very similar color to uh, what's happening with the real geometry on the ground so let's just wait until this is finishing and afterwards I can start X image which is uh, image viewer coming with radiance and okay the one image is gone but the other one is still here so I can say automatic exposure both of them and then I press C to uh, print the colors 
And I hope you can see that those values are not just visually different, they also, you know, like the the colors themselves are different. And you uh, radiance can give you measurements of real radiance and illumination and all kind of things. I don't have time to show this. I just wanted you to show it's exactly the same scene, it's exactly the same sun and sky, and the only thing which changed uh, were the render settings. And similar to this, uh, unfortunately I just got rid of the other image, but uh, the other image was very dark here, so uh, you also give it in the makefile the extensions of the room which are important for you, so you help the renderer doing a better job, and a lot of global illumination renderer don't do this. Uh, bidirectional pass tracer, unidirectional pass tracer, they just shoot rays everywhere, and uh, you're unlucky, you know, if it takes forever to render. You saw this was quick and fast. Let's see how we are doing with the time. All right, 10 minutes on a renderer, which you will probably never use. But uh, let's do the human exposure on this too. You can see at least on the right side, this was my quick and dirty thing. You know, the, uh, the shadows are too dark. That's probably what you would end up with a direct illumination situation. I don't see any of the soft shadows here. On the right side I see it. The shadows are not that dark. Th that Okay, you can't really see it, but you can see it on the... Oh, oh. I move it. Oh, that's right. Yeah? That's good. Okay, you see it better. All right. Um, yeah, so here you have some soft shadows, and that basically comes from everything outside. So you have two components. Uh, one is the uh, the sky and a lot of scattering, and the other one is like the light, which gave you this very bright spot here in the reflection, but also it's scattering around in the room, and uh, that's what global illumination does. So let's switch to Arnold. Arnold, I just mentioned free movies uh, when I lived in Los Angeles working for Digital Domain. The guy who wrote uh, Arnold was actually working at Sony Picture Image Works on Monster House. That's probably six, seven years ago. And uh, so the first two movies were fully CG, it's similar to the Blender Foundation, the first three movies are fully CG. And then the third movie was like with real actors, so the difference is basically like what Pixar does, they are always rendering everything is uh, done in the computer, versus what ILM does, uh, that you have real actors and you have to match with your renderer, you have to uh, match reality. So second scene, very simple, so very often what you do in film production is like you create the mood of a scene by lighting. So it's exactly very simple geometry, it's uh, on the left side it's bluish, on the right side it's more warm, you know, blue is cold and yellow is more warm. So all the light comes basically again from two light emitting uh, spheres and here as well they are hidden behind those uh, rectangular lenses so you don't directly see the light, you just see the effect of the illumination on the uh, wall, but what you do see are those light emitting uh, uh, discs. And now I will switch to render and uh, I want to focus on two things. My own exporter reacts on global illumination, it's a setting here which I will just type in Python commands, but you can use the graphic user interface and it will react to anti-aliasing. And uh, later I want to talk about, uh, can I not just use point lights? You know, point lights are not really visible, but I don't see those spheres. It's so bright in, inside those lampshades that I basically can get away with uh, invisible lights instead of uh, light emitting geometry. Here I'm unlucky because uh, if I, I would have to render those separately and comp it, right? But I still, with some renderers, I would get much faster results, less noise and stuff, if I uh, would fake it a little bit. So let's look at it in Blender. I think that's the latest version. I'm, I don't have the 2A version yet, but should be 264. All you do with my stuff is like you go to the user preferences as usual, community, and you go import, export, and then you say, 
format. So here, that's my Arnold S exporter. Here's my Radiance importer, and there's also Render Man and uh, whatever Manfrey IRA. So it's all there, and I just say go import uh, Radiance, and then I go to the scene and I grab the scene. That's it. Um, I go to another layer and I bring in the the lights for this one. So it's either this or I bring in on another layer the other lighting condition. Okay, that's it. So it's either this or I don't have a camera yet. So let's bring in the camera. I have to turn off here filter so I see not just radiance files, I see the VF files, which are view files. Once I have the camera, I can look through it and I can make it a little bit bigger for you. And okay, it's either this on layer three or on layer two this. Uh, I will render only like this. And down here in Python, I just type return. Okay, what you see is you don't see any bounces. Yeah, no global illumination. You see light coming from two spheres and they hit either the wall or they hit the ground and I sit the samplings very low because I want you, you know, I want to do this interactively and not uh, wait very long. So now I will cut and paste this line which uh, basically has more options. I could also go to, instead of file import, I could do file export. Oops, sorry, I think. I just cut and paste this and find the line which says uh, use global illumination which was set to false and I set it to true. And do the same thing. What happens now? It's going over the same image a couple of times and you see more hits but you also see this and that's global illumination, okay? It bounces off the ground and it goes up the ceiling again. Mm -hmm. So now this thing I was talking about, oops, that would, that would happen in Blender, um, is the anti-aliasing setting. So exactly the same command will now um, do a little bit more samples and I let it render and just get rid of those guys, uh, place it here. So it will go now uh, a couple of times through the same image and get uh, nicer and nicer while I'm talking about next slide. So, what I do in my exporter, I want spheres to be spheres. So there are naming conventions, a sphere is a sphere. So this is part of a resulting S scene. And as you can see, there's a sphere with a radius, a matrix, and a material. And it has a emission of 200, which you will find in, uh, in Blender. So I show you, I want to find this value, I want to cut it and I paste it into a custom property. And once the custom property is there, my uh, exporter will react a little bit different because it will use point lights. So this is uh, a point light, it has a radius. You will see it's not taking it from here, it creates it from the matrix. And it has that intensity value. And then it will render differently. So let's go back to Blender and um, Okay, I select this guy and uh, then I can look. The left and the right thing, they are using groups. So I'm going here to groups and I know it's called something like lampshade. And uh, then on the very last layer, my importer puts everything which is uh, used a couple of times in the scene, it puts it on the last layer as a group. So I just select this group, isolate it and select only the light sphere. And then I wanna show you the material for it and the material has down here a value of 200 for emitting. I copy and paste that, go to the geometry and create a custom property. Just edit, edit, cut and paste the values and rename it. And what was it? Use point light, I think. Let me spell it. Uh, yeah, we are old people. Okay, once I have done this, um, oh, I should go back to the layer I want to render. Then I press this and suddenly you will see it's too bright. Uh, the other one is still rendering here. Um, 
and that one is too bright. So let me explain what's happening here in the next slide. So I will now go to a shell and I will render exactly the same scene but with a slightly different setting, kick as, kick is a render of Arnold, as is the scene description and it has a couple of other values like gamma and uh, settings and the minus E or dash E minus three is uh, the camera exposure. I go lower with the camera exposure. So, where's my shell? Where's my cursor? Whoops. Let's go here, that's the command. And those are my files, so I get rid of this one. And as you can see, hopefully, can you see both? Okay, on the left side, difference is uh, it's a point light which is normally not visible, but uh, I don't care in the scene because basically it's so bright that lampshade that I do not see the sphere where the light is coming from. On the right side, it's light emitting geometry. And let me get rid of this because I hope you will believe me that it will look like this at the end. Can you see that the right side is a little bit more noisy than the left side? And, uh, okay, it's not fair. The left side has 20 minutes rendering time and the other one had 10 minutes. But believe me, it's exactly the same settings. If I go and change the settings for the right side and make it render longer, it will still be more noisy after 20 minutes. And this is uh, happening with a lot of renderers. You know, sometimes you really can, okay, cheat if you can. And that's something uh, I think all this global illumination renderers have to learn because in film production that's what we do. We cheat if we can. We have to cheat. If the director says the, 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 you know, the fluids go uphill, we have to make it go uphill. If it says go left, go right, we don't care about physics. It has to be believable. All right, let's talk about cycles. This is like from the blend swap. If you download the PDF file, you can click it. it goes to the right uh, location, just download that file, press the render button and you will end up with that image. I will talk about this, which was rendered with a, a couple of renderers. What are we doing with time? Okay. Okay, like, for example, this one is very interesting. It's just a couple of spheres and a CSG operations, so you cut out of a big sphere, you cut out four parts with uh, four smaller spheres and then you add another sphere, cut out another part and rotate it and do it again and then you end up with kind of a lotus and then you illuminate it and you end up with this nice uh, caustics which is horror for most renderers, you know. Okay, I want to show you this just how I set up things in, uh, in Blender and I will use a different version of Blender actually for it because I don't like uh, the cycle behavior now that it's just doing a couple of, uh, how do you call it, buckets. So let me take a older one but I, and I, uh, I'm not importing it as a, as a radiance file, I just find the... So I did import everything as radiance but uh, I just want to save you the time now. I loaded it already and on frame 6 to 10 I have all the cameras. So I go select the camera, look through it and activate layers 1 to 5 where all the geometry is. Okay. So I want to show you which is on the slide here. We first select the camera, we have it in the viewport and we want to render the same camera twice. Once uh, in a night condition with electrical light within that uh, gallery and once with the daylight system and all the other lights turned off. So how do I do this? I find on this side, I find all the light emitting geometry and I keyframe uh, the values just to turn it on and off, all right? And the next thing I do is like uh, on a special layer, layer two, I have the sun, which is really just a directional light, and I turn it off for the, uh, for the night scene. That's all I do. So let's show life in Blender. Uh, I look already through the camera. Down here I have, had to have the keyframes, but I'm looking at the wrong one, so let me turn that off and those on. And now I type in here in my filter, 
Something with type uh, is a light emitting geometry. I just take one of them, it's a material, and let's home this. So on frame one, it's um, zero, and on frame two, it's 150. So basically, uh, up here it's on, down here it's off. Okay, and I do this on all light emitting geometry. And the values are actually really exactly the same as in radians. You know, I just import and I bring in the materials in a way that it knows, okay, those are 200 units, whatever the units mean, and that's my light emitting stuff. So, okay, let's go back to frame one and just press the image render button. And I bring up my web page. Let's scroll down to Cycles, Art Gallery. That's what I expect to see, the left image. Hopefully, I've done the right thing. And uh, it's building the acceleration structure, and you can see, oh, it's going in the right direction. Now, waiting a couple of hours later, it will look like this image on the web page. Hours. The, of minutes, you no, know. the strange thing is really, I mean, uh, it looks pretty good already after an hour, but uh, to get noise free and with all, uh, don't really worry. I mean, uh, cycles can really compete with uh, commercial software and I, uh, I can guarantee that. I worked five years for mental images. I had very early access for iRay. The only thing maybe to make the connection to my previous speaker, um, iRay or the Manta Ray product would uh, uh, render on that farm prob probably. Uh, because that's one thing you really have to keep in mind. To make it production ready and run on such a huge infrastructure. Uh, this already looks much better than the Arnold thing, right? Yeah. And, there, and there's no cycle stacks everywhere, right? <laughs> okay, my computer holds at me. Let me just uh, do the uh, second frame. And uh, I have to turn off, as I said. The only thing I turn off that um, um, second layer, that's where the sun is. Oops. So, we expect now this image. Okay, and while uh, I, I think once it starts rendering, I can show you the last two slides, and then take your question if you have some. You can see it's going in that direction, so all I want to say before I show this slide is uh, that's a company I work for, and their webpage and their uh, Facebook channel. That's my company, and uh, what's not on the slide is if you do my uh, web page and uh, slash render forum, that's what I uh, just created, and uh, you're welcome to register. And then that part here, that's uh, what I showed on that local copy of my web page. Here you can download the PDF slides. I also have slides uh, from the FMX. And that's where I announce talks like this, and this is one of the repositories I hope to open soon. Right now only the wiki is like visible. So what's the future plan? For all the other renders, I actually, I didn't write the exporters myself. Uh, I relied on other people to do this, uh, which means unfortunately that uh, I have to use a very special Blender version, you know, to work with a particular renderer. And I, uh, I'd like to talk to those uh, developers uh, to unify it. I have a couple of ideas, you know, uh, what I do with my own exporters. And then use the forum. You're welcome to register. It's really cooperating with you guys. And uh, I brought uh, professional people I uh, work with in the film industry. They are on the same forum. And I hope you don't hate each other and uh, we will learn from each other. I'd like to have more public test scenes, so if you want to contribute, be careful that all the textures and everything are really royalty-free, you know, that uh, everybody really... I have the infrastructure in place to store them in a, a repository and make sure, you know, that uh, versions, if you change something, are tracked. Uh, but I cannot guarantee that what you give me is, like, royalty-free. And as you see, my examples were very simple because I cannot take production scene from the mill. 
I'd like to have a radiance exporter, not just an importer, because if I get a scene from you guys, I still want to do a comparison with radiance. I want a uh, Arnold importer because when I do something at home with Blender and then I create an S file, I have also uh, the day-to-day -day work I do is like I use commercial software like Maya, so I can bring it in directly without doing anything in Maya and export with uh, other renderers. And uh, one thing just to mention, like uh, Arnold, uh, there's one version which you can buy pretty soon. Uh, which uses C, uh, as C or C++ as a shading language. Uh, traditionally in film, we worked with RenderMan and it has its own simple shading language. And what's the future of shading languages? Maybe OSL, I saw that uh, Cycles will support it, maybe the only renderer I know about who <laughs> actually supports it yet. But the other one is uh, Arnold, uh, and it's a different version uh, they use at Sony Picture Image Works. And yeah, if you click on this, you will end up on on the OSL page, and that's maybe the future of shading language. Thanks. Band. Oh, Sergei! Everybody going to Sergei? Now nah, there's a more interesting stuff here too. Stay here. Stay here. Stay. Oh, yes. There's a music band here. There's artistic stuff too. <laughs> I can connect the mouse. You used to work with the Mac? You ever did that? No? Because you this I can disable it. This is the cursor. If you move it to the corner uh -huh. and back, it moves the, the windows back and forth. So, <laughs> right. so, so that's easy. That's all. Could you, could to, you, um, um, what do you want to open? No, this is all this is only blender six, two sixty three. I don't have a newer one. Oh it's okay because I work this with is very slow one. It doesn't matter. Okay. I, I have to work it around okay. the seat, and that's all. And here is the finder. This one should have the. This it. Your stuff. There it is. So, um, you want to open the conference. This way, so you can see it. And uh, the blender, blender application. Either one of this. Okay. How is the application to the Yeah. Uh, Just a uh, two minute setup. Thank you. What do you want? 
uh, to open my scene. Are oh, the, uh, the yeah, no name? No name. Yeah. No name. Okay. Yeah. We'll find the scene. Open. And now, the open up the soft 